Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, where we bring you intriguing true stories about unusual people. Tonight, we pay tribute to a great humanitarian. His name was Henry Berg, and the result of his amazing single-handed crusade against an age-old evil is evidenced by institutions all over America. Indeed, all over the civilized world. And we are especially proud tonight to have the distinguished actor, Mr. Edward Arnold, to play the role of Henry Byrd. But first, here's Frank Goss. Have you ever wondered why it's so easy to find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it? Well, let me tell you the reason. The makers of Hallmark cards are aware of the important part greeting cards play in your social life, of the links of friendship they represent. And so every Hallmark card is designed to meet specific standards of quality and good taste. Only the best will do for you to send to your friends. And because these standards have been maintained through the years, the Hallmark and crown on the back of each card you mail means you care enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the new color picture Knights of the Round Table in Cinemascope, Starring Robert Taylor, Ava Gardner, and Mel Ferrer. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's transcribed story, starring Mr. Edward Arnold as Henry Berg on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. The year is 1863, and the place, St. Petersburg now known as Leningrad, Russia. It is six months since Henry Berg, at the age of 52, has been appointed secretary to the American ambassador. It's not a very high post for the moderately wealthy son of one of America's most prominent social families. Henry Berg might well be considered a failure in the diplomatic service. But his presence in St. Petersburg has not gone unnoticed by the Russians. Far from it, as the dismayed American ambassador is learning in strong terms from an official representative of the Tsar's government. I must warn you that this man, Berg, will not be tolerated much longer if he persists in meddling in the affairs of the Russian people. Please lower your voice, Captain. Just what do you propose that I do? I order his dismissal at once. You order? Well, he's an employee of the American legation, not the Russian government. He executes his duties faithfully and well. I will not discharge him. Very well, then. Let me warn you. The police will no longer be responsible for his safety. If he so much... You sent for me, sir? Oh, yes, yes, Henry. Uh, Henry, this is Captain Viroslav. I met the captain this morning in the public square. Where you seize the halter from the hands of a peasant leading his cow to market and set the animal free to be lost in the streets. Is this true, Henry? It is, sir. By what right? By the right of human decency. The animal was sore from lack of milking, followed by a half-starved calf bleeding to be fed. And when she tried to stop to care for her young, she was beaten. And is this a diplomatic matter for the American legation? The manner in which a Russian peasant chooses to treat a Russian cow? The animal made no mention of its nationality. Henry. Henry... You must understand that the position that I must take is official. It is my duty to promote amicable relations between our nation and Russia. Regardless of my personal feelings and opinions in the matter, I must forbid any further interference in internal affairs. 
so long as you are on the staff of this legation. Yeah. Then, Mr. Ambassador, my wife and I will return to the United States. You have my resignation, effective as soon as I can be replaced. Oh, Henry, are you sure this is the wisest course? There is no other course, sir. People who so heartlessly abuse dumb beasts will not hesitate to mistreat their wives and their children. May God grant that they never hold such power over other nations and other people. <laughs> we return to New York, you've been troubled. What is it, dear? I don't like this feeling of constant failure, Mabby. Failure? Yes, failure in Russia. I couldn't even defend the rights of a cow. Now I come home and find sick, abandoned, starving animals wandering the streets of my own country. In every dumb beast, I see the human race indicted for brutality. I know, dear, but you are not a part of it. I'm a part of it if I do nothing about it. We all are. Every decent citizen in the nation should and must subscribe to some organization to correct this evil. But no such organization exists. Mm, I intend to see that it does. We have enough money to make a start. If we can educate people and list their aid, uh, appeal to their oh, reason. Oh, shit! Who are you, Who are you, Jim? 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 Now, what do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing, striking a poor beast like that? Well, I'll be... Oh, so that's it. Oh, this animal is overloaded. It would take two like him to pull that wagon the way you've got it stacked. Not when he tastes the whip, it doesn't. Well, he isn't going to taste the whip again. Oh, no, is he not? Look, me fine gentleman, you pick up your nice silk hat and go on about your business. I will as soon as you and I have removed half the load from this wagon. Maybe you've not been hearing me. Maybe you need a taste of the whip yourself. Here, give me that. Well, why don't you take it away from me? Help me! Oh, wait. Yes. Here, listen oh. to you. Let me go, Mr. Yes. Right. All right, let me be. There, this is settling. Oh. Oh. Well, have you had enough, my friend? No. Uh, it'll be no small task explaining to the lads in the market how Pat McLean was done in being mine in a silk hat. Will you hold my jacket, Matilda? What's left of it? What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to help my good friend Pat McLean unload this wagon. <laughs> Sit on your wagons and keep your ears open and your jaws shut. There is a man here who has something to say to all of you. He said it to me this afternoon after making me a present of this black eye you've all been admiring. All right, now, here he is, a fine gentleman, Mr. Henry Ford. Men, I want to talk to you about your partners in business, the horses that pull your wagons. Now, they don't get paid except for being cared for. And they're not always cared for well. I'm asking for a raise, a drink of water and a short rest whenever they need it, a blanket over them when it's cold, and a wagon fairly loaded with consideration for the size, age, and strength of the animal pulling it. Now, wait a moment. Use, please use your heads if you can't use your heart. You can weaken a horse so he can't pull. You can find him lying lame and sick in his stall. You can kill him a few years before his time. If you do, you both lose. I ask you to make these changes voluntarily. A decent code of human behavior. If you don't, then I shall petition every court in this land, if necessary, to protect your animals and punish you in turn. I'm sorry, Mr. Burke. I'm with you, but it looks like you've got a long road ahead. Good evening, Mrs. Burke. Is himself home? No, not yet, Pat. I, I guess he's still in court. There's another case, you know. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, those, those young fellows who were out shooting birds. Won't you come in and wait? My husband will be happy to see you. Yeah. I, uh... I got four of the teams just to sign up for the pledge Mr. Berg's been asking them to take. They, they each give me 50 cents to help things along. I, I know it ain't much, but... He'll be proud and delighted, Pat. Ah, they're not bad fellas, ma'am. They're the ones who won't sign. It's just that uh, and the newspapers have been making such a joke of Mr. Berg. Oh, there he is. Don't mention the newspapers to him, Pat. Just give him your good news. Yes, ma'am. Mm, good evening, dear. Henry? Oh, hello, Pat. Good evening, sir. Is the uh, case over, Henry? Yes, it's over. And my record as a failure is untarnished. Oh, darling. Judge Han wouldn't even listen to the bill of particulars. The defense attorney moved for a dismissal the moment the court opened and Han granted it. I tried to protest and he fined me $200 for contempt of court. Contempt of court? Mm. Isn't there something you can do? Yes, there is. I can fight. I filed another action this afternoon. Against whom? Not somebody they'll laugh at this time. Against Kit Burns, the professional gambler who's been staging those fights between dogs and gamecocks. Kit Burns? Well, begging your pardon, sir, but he's a powerful man. He's a brute and a criminal. Henry, after today, do you honestly think you'll be able to bring such a man to trial? I'll bring him there. If it takes the rest of my life, I'll bring him there. Now, I'm afraid the missus is right, sir. You'll have a long wait. Then I'll know how to spend it. I arranged for a loan on the house today, Matilda. I, I bought a barn on the east side. For the shelter? Yes, we'll convert it to, uh, to house every sick and starving animal it can humanely hold. If I'm going to be a fool, I'm going to be a big fool. <laughs> In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Yesterday, I ran into an old friend of mine downtown. The first thing he said was, Say, Jane and I really appreciated that anniversary card you folks sent us. How do you manage to remember the date each year? Well, I had to admit that we didn't rely entirely on our memories. You see, like so many busy women, my wife keeps track of special dates in her Hallmark date book. If you don't have one, let me tell you about it. The Hallmark date book is a handy little reminder, just the right size to slip into your pocketbook. It contains a page-by-page -page calendar for the year with space for notations beneath each day. That way you can jot down the dates of anniversaries, birthdays, dental appointments, club meetings, everything you want to remember. As my wife says, a Hallmark date book is the next best thing to having a social secretary. And best of all, you can have yours just for the asking. It's a gift from stores that feature Hallmark cards. So why not get your Hallmark date book tomorrow? And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Henry Berg. Starring Mr. Edward Arnold. One by one, the art treasures and the heirlooms disappeared from the home of Henry Berg. And the clothes that Henry and Matilda wore were not as new and fashionable as they might have been. But each new day found the converted barn expanding to hold more and more sick and homeless animals. The curious came to look and laugh. But here and there, one stopped laughing and pitched in to help. Yeah, don't petition that stall. Just wire across the front. Pardon me, monsieur. Are you Henri Berg? Your servant, sir. My name is Bonnard. Well, uh, if you have a bill to present, Mr. Bonnard, I'm afraid... <laughs> no, 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 no. You owe me nothing, monsieur. I have come only to offer my help, if you can use me. Well, Mr. Bono, I... I, I... I know I am a very old man, monsieur, but surely there must be some use even for an old man. Why, of course there is. I'm very grateful for your offer, Mr. Bonner. We're using scrap nails. Perhaps you could sort them for us and straighten the bent ones. I would be happy. Well, I'll tell you, they're back here. Okay. 
Oh, perhaps we may be able to pay you. I don't know. It won't I be much. I need no payment, monsieur. Believe me. Are you French? French Canadian. Do you know how I made my living? I was a trapper, a dealer in furs. Uh, age brings strange changes, monsieur. Once I killed animals. Now I would help them, as you do. I'm very happy to have you here, Sam. We could use all the help we can get. Do not fear, monsieur. You will have help. I promise you. further demonstration, I will instruct the bailiff to clear the room of all spectators. Your Honor. The bench recognizes the district attorney. You may proceed, Mr. Lassiter. My office is sufficiently burdened with work without being forced to make futile attempts to prosecute complaints filed by Mr. Berg. The defendant in this action is a gentleman and a sportsman who is known and respected throughout the city, Mr. Kit Burns. Your Honor. All right, Mr. Berg. What is it? I would like to give the court a more accurate description of Mr. Kit Burns. This so-called sport that he promises consists of putting two dogs or gamecocks in a pit where they attempt to rip each other to shreds in a fight to the death. My customers like what I give them, Your Honor. Several gentlemen from the state legislature and the board of aldermen have reserved seats for every event. That is true, Your Honor, they do. But again, not gentlemen. A handful of corrupt officials who block passage of any laws that would put Kit Burns and his like out of business. Order! Order in this court! I'll file a suit for slander against you, Berg, and send you to the state penitentiary. I would welcome such a suit. That will be all for both of you. Will you please continue, Mr. Lassner? Well, Your Honor, I, I don't know how to continue. If Mr. Berg has forced me into this court, but I have no legal ground on which to prosecute this action, there's nothing in Mr. Burns' sporting events which violate either the letter or the intent of the law. Then the action has no place in this court. Uh, Mr. Burns, the charges against you are dismissed. But you can't do this, Your Honor. I have done it, Mr. Berg. How long are you going to insist upon filing actions in which the plaintiffs are animals. Until some animal walks into this court and files a complaint for itself. <laughs> Mr. Burr, I find you in contempt. You are sentenced to 10 days in the city jail. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I apologize for offending the court. I came here to plead for animals, that's true. But I also came to plead for people. Animals are part of our daily lives, Your Honor. They supply us with food and clothing. They also give us intangible blessings such as loyalty and love, companionship and devotion. I don't think that these gifts can be paid for with a kick and a curse or with murder in the name of sport. I have seen brutality in other lands go unchallenged. I do not believe it can long go unchallenged in America. If it does, then our sense of what is right and just must bear it. I ask every man in this courtroom to commend this thought to his conscience and to his immortal soul. Thank you for permitting me to speak, Your Honor. The jail sentence is suspended. This court is adjourned. <laughs> Makes you think he'll be here, Burns. Oh, he comes down to the market every night. Makes trouble for these teamsters. Mm. Didn't you see the cartoons? Yeah. Well, how far should we go? Give him a beating that he'll never forget. Yeah. Here comes Bird now. Mm. All right, get him. Okay. Uh, just a minute, mister. Were you speaking to me? Yeah. I got a present for you. Little contribution for your society. That's it. Come on, you men. Get in this. Come on. Hey, what's going on there? Patrick. Patrick, man. 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 Pat
You don't recognize him, Mr. Bennett. This is my husband. You've seen him in newspaper cartoons. Oh, no, Matilda. It's all right, Mr. Berg. She's entirely justified. I was in court when you spoke yesterday. It was the first time I'd seen you personally. I have come to pledge you the complete editorial support of the New York Herald in your campaign. And my unlimited personal support. I want to apologize for every member of my profession who was thoughtless enough to try to make a humanitarian look like a fool. My humble thanks to you, sir. Don't thank me. Thank the people who made me go to court. I went because we received thousands of letters from all over the country supporting your campaign. Uh, I actually reached the people. You reached them, sir, and they reached us. The Herald's front page tomorrow will carry an editorial demanding new and adequate laws to bring cruelty to animals to an end. Well, there it is, Manny. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Oh, it's a very pretty sign, Henry. The first shelter for animals. If only Bonar could have lived to see it completed. Henry? Well, well, James Bennett. Good afternoon, Mr. Bennett. Ah, I see it's finally finished, Henry. It's a real monument. You should be proud. Built nail by nail and dollar by dollar. That's no longer the case, Henry. You've got more money than you ever dreamed. How's that? I brought you tonight's Herald. Read it. <laughs> French Canadian trapper leaves fortune to Berg Society. Bonar bequeaths one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to society for the prevention of cruelty to animals. Henry. Bonar. Bonar. Why, it's impossible. Apparently, he was a very wealthy man, Henry. They found his will last night, naming you and your society the sole heirs. A man who spent most of his life trapping animals. It is written in the 11th chapter of Isaiah. The wolf also shall dwell with the kid, and the leopard shall lie down with the lamb. started the organization known throughout the land today as the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and its growth gave strength and impetus to similar organizations in England and throughout the civilized world. By unwavering courage and perseverance, Henry Berg won the battle against brutality and made the world a better place to live in, for animals and for men. In just a minute, Mr. Barry Moore will be back with our guest, Edward Arnold. At this season of the year, friendly acts and friendly thoughts take on a richer meaning, and we realize anew how much we value our friends. If you're thinking along these lines right now, 
you'll find that one of the best helps for keeping friendships growing throughout the year is waiting for you at the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. It's the Hallmark date book for 1954. This handy date book makes remembering easy, for it has space for the names and addresses of all your friends, room to put in their special dates, their birthdays, anniversaries, and the like. In fact, every date you want to remember in the new year. And the Hallmark date book is just the right size to carry with you, so you'll always have a reminder to help you be a better friend. So this week, when you're in the stores that feature Hallmark cards, just ask for your Hallmark date book. It's the store's gift to you, for friendship's sake. Tonight, these same stores, as well as the makers of Hallmark cards, and all of us here on the Hallmark Hall of Fame, want to wish you and yours a very happy and prosperous new year. And now, here again is Lionel Barrymore. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. And thank you, Edward Arnold, for a perfectly splendid performance. It's good to have you back with us again on a Hallmark program. It's always a special occasion when you're with us. <laughs> well, thank you, Lionel. And if I may return the compliment, I always look forward to the stories that you do on Hallmark Hall of Fame, and I'll tell you why. Your stories are always entertaining and often dramatic and exciting as well. But more important to me, they have an inspiring quality about them. That's partly because you tell true stories about real people. And it's also because, well, you know these people for their courage or faith or kindness and love of their fellow men and the defenseless creatures of this world, like today's story, for instance. I think we should have more programs like this that the whole family can enjoy and then mull over them afterwards and profit by them in their daily lives. And so that's why I'm especially delighted to be here with you today. Well, Eddie, all I can say after that is here. Please take one of our Hallmark date books and mark down the soonest possible date that you can be with us again on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. <laughs> And you'll find this date book will come in real handy for a busy gentleman like yourself. Oh, good. I'd like to have one. And good night. I hope to see you soon, Lionel. Happy New Year to everybody. Good night, Eddie. Good night. And ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame and the makers of Hallmark cards and the fine stores that feature them, may I wish you and yours a happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year. Remember, you're also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday, starring Miss Sarah Churchill. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Edward Arnold can soon be seen in the forthcoming release, Man of Conflict. Our producer-director is William Frew. Our transcribed story tonight was written by Joel Murcott. Featured in our cast were Jeanette Nolan, William Johnstone, Ben Wright, Howard McNear, Herb Butterfield, Lawrence Dobkin, Ken Christie, and John Daner. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time when we present an exciting story about the famous cowboy Tom Mix. And the week following, we'll bring you a true story about William Allen White. And on January 17th, we salute Mark Twain on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.